close. Maybe hold your hand a little. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And if you are new here, I am Tamika and I do all ultrasound and lifestyle vlogs here on my channel, as well as sit down, talk to you type of vlogs like this one is today. So, and it's all about ultrasound. And if you are new, thank you for clicking on this video. Um, and if you are not new, then thank you so much for coming back and support your girl. I'm so grateful for you guys and ladies and gents. I shouldn't say guys, but ladies and gents. Um, I so appreciate your support here. We are growing, I can't believe it. Uh, but yeah, thank you. And if you are new, please, Think about subscribing, coming apart, coming to you know our family, which is great, and I love it here. I love my community. I love what we have built, and it just keeps getting better. So, please hit that like button, and as well as subscribe to my channel. And uh, yeah, let's get into this video. Oh yeah, you know what? Can you guys do me a favor? Share the video too. Just click on that little arrow that says share copy the link, share it to your peoples, to your peers. Greatly appreciate it. Okay, so let's get into this video. In today's video, I am just simply talking about how to juggle life, work, school, balance, how to have a good balance. Um, I got asked to do a video on this. Um, I'm not perfect by no means, and I don't have a an, an ideal plan for you. However, all I know is you have to use your time efficiently. And I went to school for ultrasound at nighttime and my classes were from six to 10, Monday through Thursday. And on Friday we had off, but we had to be in scan lab all day Saturday from eight to 4.30. And so um, that's how school was. And I worked Monday through Friday as a medical assistant in an urgent care and I worked from eight to 5.30. So I had 30 minutes to get to work, me to school, and I did it. I mean, I didn't complain. And one thing you need to know about me, one thing that you have to know about me is that I take school and I use it to the best of my ability. And what I mean by is, what I mean by that is, is that I don't stress off getting straight A's because those straight A's are not going to get me my ultimate job. So I use the information they're giving me. I study the material. I do the work. But if I get a C on it, okay. I'm okay with that. Obviously, I didn't study that hard or obviously I didn't understand that information. So I'm going to rally around my peers get more information from them to make one to see if i you know need more clarity on something or if they can help me in an area that maybe i might have been you know struggling in but i felt as a medical assistant i knew the basis of medical so i didn't need that structure over again and what was new to me so like anatomy and physiology what was new to me oh sorry my bad so I didn't need that over again and so what was new to me was like the physics and um learning how to, the machine works and how to take images and how how to be more efficient scanning <sighs> let me tell y'all if it had not been for me rallying around with my peers and getting a good clique of girls to support each other, um, I probably would not have like rallied through. Just putting, just putting it out there. Because there's times where you're like, okay, I just don't get it. I want to give up. There's been time, there was times where I was, you know, I might have been at home studying and I, you know, didn't feel like studying. And I would call my girlfriend from class and she was like, Tamika, you know, you could do this or what have you. Or my mother, my mother was a big influence with me. Um, but I'm telling you now, like you need that support system because if you're one who kind of like self-reflects and compares and, you know, 
has that whole thing of, well, Anna, she's getting straight A's and then I'm stuffing over here with C pluses and B's. It's not a comparison thing. Don't compare yourself to your counter cohorts. Don't do that because you'll get, you become, I don't like using words like this, but you could get, you get depressed. You could find yourself like, okay, well, I'm just going to throw in the towel. I don't understand it. It's too hard. Okay. That's just the devil speaking. Like God wouldn't have placed you in that situation or in this moment and giving you the vision of this career if he didn't think that you could do it so start thinking life into your in into your um start speaking life and just enjoy the ride as you go if you don't know something ask your teacher ask your peers get a clique of friends that are willing to help you push you encourage you through all of it and you do the same for your peers that's what I teach in my mentor program with, you know, just teaching them how to um, navigate through school, navigate with their peers, encouraging them. I am like the number one cheerleader when it comes to cheering on my mentors, mentees, because it's like I've been there. I know the struggle. I know that this is new information that you don't know how to process and that you don't understand. Believe me. Um balancing that with also having to work and also go to school and if you have kids or a husband as well i get it i really do um i didn't have kids or a husband or a boyfriend for that matter but i did have a social life i would still travel i would still go see my girlfriend in san diego i would still go to vegas i i mean i did things i didn't stop living just because i was in school um, I didn't let school control me. Like I said, if I got a C, I passed, I was good. Um, my whole focus was once I'm in school, do the best, but hurry up and leave. Do whatever it takes to get through the program so I can be on the other side looking for a job. They're not going to ask you, well, what kind of grades did you get in school? What, were you valedictorian? They're not going to ask you that. So why even stress off doing such? Now, if you're a straight A student already and you get the stuff, get the information, that's great. But I wasn't that girl. And even in medical assistant school, like I passed and I, I'm a great medical assistant um, and I was able to get jobs. But even as an ultrasound tech, there has been struggles where... You know, and my um, my first job, prime example. Prime example, my scanning teacher. He was amazing, and when I say he was amazing, I didn't believe enough in myself to apply for a job that I felt that I was not ready for. And when I say I wasn't ready for, it's because I didn't get, if I, it's not because I didn't get A's or B's, it's because I felt how you are. I felt like I wasn't ready. I felt like I couldn't scan a complete exam. I felt like I couldn't scan and be efficient or be an asset to a company. And so with that being said, it's like, I understand where you are coming from and with his ability to see what I couldn't see in myself he applied for my first job I went and they said well hey you know what I said you know I don't want teacher I'm not going to say his name but teacher I don't want um to go on this interview because what if they don't hire me then I'm going to feel like a failure. Like, then I'm not going to feel like I'm really not going to apply for the second job if they don't hire me on the first one. And I had to get out of my own way because I was blocking my own blessing. And we do that a lot. So don't feel like you're alone on that journey because I've been there before. I've, I haven't had ultrasound confidence like I speak and preach to you guys. I haven't had that my whole career. No, I didn't get that until probably two years after and it takes time because you're going to have to be able to um, scan by yourself. You're going to have to be able to diagnose by yourself. You're not You're going to have to be able to not second guess yourself. And so that's why I say it takes a good year to two years on one job to build that confidence. And 
I have ran into students lately that have that passion and drive and hey, I could do this. Like I literally just, oh my gosh, I kid you not. I met her, something spoke to me and I was like, she has that it factor. And because she spoke with so much grace and knowledge and she could also scan as well like she's an anomaly like literally and she's I got her hired on she graduated from school about a year and a half ago and she's registered and she's out there and she's I think she's registered in admin and she has her SPI um but let me tell you when the girl has been on a job and the radiologist is like, nope, go back and get this image again. Nope, go back and get this ovary again. Okay, I wanna have you bring this patient back so I could be in the room and scan with you. She took it with grace. That's going to happen. It didn't, she didn't let it get in her head like I can't do this, I'm not able to. No, radiologist understands like, hey, there's gonna be issues with scanning patients. Everybody is not the same body type. Let me tell you, you're gonna have obese, you're gonna have frail patients, you're gonna have, you know, geriatric patients, pediatric patients, you're just gonna have some people with no neck, some people with long necks. I'm just putting it out there. When you're trying to get a, a carotid and ECA and you gotta be like all contorsed, it's not fun. However, don't let that defeat you. Don't let that not that don't let that like block or that wall go up and be like, you know what? I can't do this. I'm throwing in the towel. No, you can do it. Believe me. When I get in those situations as of today, I take a breath. I go get the radiologist and say, "Hey, I need you to come in. Come in and scan with me because I'm seeing something. I'm not sure really what it is. Be real. Don't put on a front. You're human." This is not an MRI machine or a CT scan machine or a um, PET scan mach machine or an x-ray machine scanning the patient. We are human beings scanning another human being, hoping that this machine that we're using picks up anything that is abnormal or what have you. So if we see something that is questionable and we're not sure what it is, measure it, all three dimensions, as well as put color on it. And if you're really not sure, go get the radiologist. And he may not be sure, but at least you could put his name on the report that you're writing up. I scanned with Dr. Smith and this is what we saw. That's what I put. If I have a radiologist or someone come in and scan, I put their name on it as well to cover me. So I said that to say this, my very first job Oh, by the way, I just hooked up with another job. This is, I'm sorry, I could go all over. But the girl that I got hired, she's doing amazing. She absolutely, she works three to four days a week. She's absolutely loving it. She's making money. She's making more money than she was where she was before. And she was at a 3D, 4D company. Let me tell you, if she, if you could get a job at a school at a 3D, 4D, at least you're not losing your technique and you're, and you're still scanning and just because you're scanning at a 3D, 4D place, take your time as far in the sense of, look at the baby brain. Get to know what, what structures you're looking at. But that's what she did for a whole year. I met her, ran into her, offered the position. She took it, she ran with it. Her confidence is sky rocket, like she's amazing. And now I just hooked her up with, because everybody knows that I do applications as well. So I'm bringing her on with me to do applications and sending her out to teach other, other and like go demo like the machine at hospitals and try to sell the machine. So that's what I'm doing with her and she's loving it. She just got the machine dropped off to her so she could go over the machine. I'm so excited for her. But let me get back to my story just to let you guys know what was going on with her. But he applied for the job. I went and I went and let me tell you, when I when I say that I wanted to dig a hole and crawl in it, I did. Because the other thing is your girl didn't go to every scan lab. 
No, she didn't. Not at all. Um, I just didn't feel that it was necessary. If I scan the thyroid last week, last week, why do I need to scan the thyroid this week? And I think you guys is like, I don't, I know that's not a word, but I'm gonna run with it. I think you guys is like scanning labs are way different now. Um, and so use, utilize that. Don't take pointers from me. Go to every single scan lab. But, um, I just felt that it was redundant. Like I didn't have to keep going and going until there was a test. That was just my thought. That was my method. And I did enough schooling to where I didn't miss, miss school to, you know, be in trouble or whatever. So, um, my fan, I was the only one away. I moved away for school. I did not go to school in the city that I live in now, currently, uh, where my family is. I moved away. I did whatever it took for me to get to that next level. Um, but that's another story. Um, <laughs> So then I ended up going to the interview. And when I tell you I wanted to dig a hole and go in it is because she says, okay, well, do your protocol. What's the protocol? And my school, I say this because I said, what's a protocol? Because my school didn't teach us, well, this will be the protocol that you will be doing in the real world. No, they just was telling us like, hey, get your, um, get a liver. Let me see a pancreas. You know, they SMA, you know, get your caudate load, your right kidney. They taught us how to scan each organ. They didn't teach us how to put it all in. Or maybe I missed that scan lab. I don't know. But they didn't teach us to put it all in a package within 30 minutes. We were never timed on a scan. So I really think that that has amped up in today's schools because they do um, they do time you and it's more of what the real world will look like. So that's a good thing. Um, but I'm sitting there and I said, okay, look, my teacher or my scan lab or my school, um, did not teach us how to do a whole protocol like that, but they did teach us how to get the organs and structures and things like that. So she just started breaking it down. Okay. Give me this long liver, measure it, get me a CBD get me a gallbladder, get me a transverse gallbladder, measure the wall of the gallbladder. She did the, show me a pancreas, get me the right kidney, transverse kidney. She just started doing things like that. And I was able to get the images. Um, was I nervous? Of course, of course I was. But I thank God that he applied because if he hadn't, and if I would have let that wall be put up and me second guessing myself, I wouldn't be where I am today. I'm going to put that out there. I would not be where I am today. And literally, I am so grateful that he believed in me because I I didn't believe enough in myself. And now that that experience, my first two years at that hospital, it was beautiful. I learned neonatal heads. I learned neo neurosynology. I learned vascular. I learned OB. I learned how to scan an ER, outpatient, in-house patient, ICU. I went everywhere, NICU. I did everything, pediatrics. So it was a trauma, level two trauma, I believe. And I saw everything under the sun. The radiologists were amazing. And even, you know, um, like the radiologists, if we had questions, we would go and we would talk about the study and about the case. I learned procedures. I went to um, pick lines and found veins and arteries for them to put lines in. And, you know, I was opened up to so much. And that's why I preach, don't close yourself off. Just because you want to do OB for the rest of your career does not mean that you shouldn't learn how to do vascular or doesn't learn doesn't mean that you shouldn't learn how to do upper and lower extremities or carotids. Get everything that you guys can absolutely learn from someone if they're willing to teach you because it's hard to be out here and people are willing to give information to you. It's not easy. Believe me. So moving forward to present time, I literally just balanced school and life and working as it came. I did it day by day. Don't stress yourself. 
Don't make, don't think it has to be perfect. If it's 30 minutes you have to study, then it's 30 minutes. If you're studying on your lunch break or your 20 minute break, then it is what it is. I never felt like I was so overwhelmed that I couldn't go on. I struggled with comprehending some of the information but I didn't feel like I was like, okay, this is just too much. It's too much on my plate. I got school. I got, um, I got to go to work. I did. I didn't feel that way. I did my work, loved it. Absolutely loved it. And once I left there, I switched over to schooling. And once I left there, I went home, had dinner, probably ate dinner at school because there was a college junior. I was fat ass, but I literally was that girl, like just living a single happy life if that makes sense and I'm not telling you guys it have to be perfect because I was not perfect believe me if I showed you my transcripts you'd be like wow and you've been full-time for 20 years yes I have yes I have so I speak because I've been there I've been where you're trying to go and so I hope that makes sense go out have a drink of coffee with your girlfriends go shopping on the weekend you know Use those little breaks, those me time breaks. You know, if it's your kids, go to the basketball game and, you know, come home, cook dinner. But maybe the next two hours, you're studying. Um, it's just all about balance and grace and just taking it day by day. Believe me, if you do that, you'll be on top. Because don't worry about tomorrow. Let tomorrow worry about itself. You just focus on today and let God lead you and you'll get through it, believe me. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Can't get enough of this. Being with you is like never ending sunshine. Feels like everything stops for a while when you